In an age where there are endless choices of games to play, I played Supervive and can tell you if it's worth your time. What do you get when you make a mashup of League, Overwatch, and Super Smash Brothers? You get Supervive. Supervive was available for testing on the 27th of June, and after a uh, long time sitting in their Discord. It's been 84 years. I finally got to play it. So what is it? Supervive is a top-down, class-based battle royale game that pits 10 teams of four against each other with up to 40 people on the map at one time. My first impressions of the playtests were that the game was really lively, fun characters, quick sequences of seeing all the opponents you're going to face while you prepare to start the round, and a really fun drop sequence where you can't actually make a mistake. One person chooses where to drop which is great because I would always mess that part up. So it plays like Overwatch and Smash Brothers. The characters have intense mobility and you have a bit of verticality here with your glider. While using it, you are vulnerable and a single hit to it will cause you to plummet to your death. There are monster camps, powerful buffs you can get from killing world bosses, consumable items you can pick up, and your character levels up by beating monsters and other players while allowing you to unlock your abilities and make them more powerful. Like every other battle royale, there's a circle as the time ticks on, making team fights more imminent. So the core loop of the game is this, picking a character, dropping into a location, killing mobs until you level up and unlock all your abilities. Then you can do fun stuff like find vaults, which are areas on the map where you have to do a little mini game in order to unlock the door and find cool little items inside. Yes, there is an open the door mini game. It is actually kind of difficult, but it plays a lot like Dead by Daylight's repair the generator kind of mechanic, where you have to hit the button at the correct time in order to get the right amount of success on the door to open it. Here, I'm gonna do this. How do I do this? I need it. Oops, I fucked up. You have to hit the green. Yeah. Oops. Three hours later. Oh my god. God damn it. So this game requires you to hit your shots. Pay attention to where people are on the map, where your character is positioned, that kind of thing. All while looking out for the other squads. But honestly, there's just so much to do on the map. I found myself doing different things and dropping in different locations just to see what would happen. So the skill ceiling is high here, like every other PvP game. Knowledge is important, and when you step into the game, there's almost an overwhelming amount of info for you to learn and look at. However, with the low character count of 16, they added two at the end that didn't have animations, it was kind of funny. It seems possible to actually get to know what all the characters do. Unlike trying to jump into a game like League where it's pretty impossible to get in there and learn the characters when there's so many to begin with. For me, a major drawback of most battle royales is that once you die, you're out. You have to sit around and wait for your teammates to either finish the round or die themselves, which can be annoying and lead to you usually just leaving the game. What I found unique about Supervive is that death isn't always the end here. The game has many ways to bring your teammates back to life, something I felt was really forgiving and creative. If you die, you become a little wisp that you can actually like customize what that looks like in your loadout. I was a big fat shark, it was great. Your teammates can actually stand on you to revive you. You'll come back with pretty much no armor, but alive. It's risky, but it is pretty cool because as a wisp, you can move around just a little bit and you might be able to get around a good corner that can save your life. When the timer on your wisp runs out, you become what's called the death box. Basically, yes, a box. They will have all your items in it, your armor, consumables you were carrying, that kind of thing. Your teammates can actually stand on that and revive you as well. As long as no enemy loots your box before, you can come back with your items. And the last, well, not the last way, the second to last way to come back is by one of the many towers on the map. These towers are timed events where any number of your team can stand in them and after a certain amount of time, your whole team will be revived. So this is a risky one because not only are these towers visible on the map, everyone can see where they are, they make a lot of noise and notify everybody on the whole map when they're being used. Last item that you can use to revive your team is actually what's called the most wanted crown. This is a special, special item that, you know, there's there's a couple of them on the map and they'll usually drop more uh, near the end of the game, but you can find this and if you grab it, be prepared because you'll have to hang on to it for a whole two minutes 
Everyone on the map knows where you are, you can't hide, and it's probably the most intense item you can get. If you're able to hold on to it for two minutes, your teammates respond, which could literally be how you win the game. This actually happened to me once. We were losing and rezzing the entire time, and we ended up getting a crown, coming back, and somehow winning the game. Pretty cool comeback mechanic. Players can also use the environment to their advantage, where you can hit abilities off of geometry, walls, trees, other players. And you can knock other players into these things as well, which is a lot like Super Smash Brothers. You can also drop kick them over the abyss for an instant kill. The game mashup makes sense since the devs are from Blizzard, Riot, Respawn, and Bungie. Games that are pretty high polished uh, with devs that have a lot of experience with PVP. It looks like they took what they learned from League, Overwatch, Apex Legends, maybe even Destiny as well. Oh, and definitely Battle Right. Definitely Battle Right. This game has a lot of UI elements and even kits that feel similar to Battle Right if you've ever heard of it. It feels like they took elements from all these games and somehow compacted them all into like a little ball and that ball is Super Vive. The devs have been pretty hyped about everything with constant updates to their Discord. And honestly, it's that constant interaction that makes me feel like they really care and will at least listen to any of the community's concerns. There was even a show match that showed off some of the best players of the game, dropping into the map together for an intense 40 man winner takes all. Yes, these were all the people who have been playing the game for over 500 hours. That's a whole other can of worms that we can talk about in a future video. They also took clips from the community and made a hype video out of it, which kind of felt like a victory lap for a smoothly run play test. And guess who was featured in it? Playing Super Vive with my friends. <laughs> oh my God. During the playtest, there was a huge population playing at one time. The performance of the game was stellar. I didn't notice any weird lag or game breaking bugs or even really server disconnects. There were very precise times where they had different regions. So if you played during an EU time, you were gonna get EU ping. Same with the NA time. But I really liked how clear they were about it and how they actually took servers down in the off times. I also have to call out a nice feature they have. The ability to go into a practice range and then queue up for any game mode you want did feel kind of nice. And it should let you queue on the bottom left. Oh, what? That's so yeah. cool. Maybe this isn't such a groundbreaking feature, but the ability to do that in a game that's under development was pretty nice. Something that I noticed right away is that not only did the map kind of look like the same style of a League of Legends map, their VFX actually was really readable. Something that Riot devs have actually created was a VFX guide on how to make their own VFX visible and kind of stick to a certain style. Super Vive had a lot of the same kind of feel to it where it had a lot of those elements League has where if you're not used to looking at a lot of VFX on the screen, it can be a little confusing and overwhelming, but they did try very hard to make where the ends of abilities are obvious, where you're gonna get the most damage obvious. It just takes a little practice to really get to know where those things are and what they look like. So the projectile range of abilities was pretty readable. And in general, it was fairly obvious to understand what my abilities do. And there was pretty decent descriptions of the abilities when you looked at them. I just had to look at them a lot because learning a new game just takes a long time. As for character design, I can say my feelings are mostly positive. I can tell the team is a little bit more conservative with their character designs, coming from a place that designs mostly human characters, Apex Legends, uh, Destiny, and then even League has a lot of human characters. So you get a lot of human characters with various archetypes. So let's get into that a little bit. You have Machine Gun Man, Man with Gun, Lady with gun, man with sword, man with sword. But even with that, there are some standout designs and unique ones here. So I might judge a little bit, but I judge even harder if the character kits weren't fun to play. As for the map itself, it felt really inventive and fun with a varied landscape that made choosing where to drop very exciting. 
and the UI felt pretty well made and easy to understand once you kind of played around with the game a bit. The sound design was interesting as well. The map didn't really have music since sound plays a big part in whether you get heard by other teams or not. Other than character abilities making noise, birds on the map can actually cause noise as you disturb them and run into them. Okay, what is this? Oh, birds. That's bird. Of course, resurrecting teammates, firing weapons, and using abilities. These things, the fact that these things make noise, actually kind of adds to the tenseness of the game and not knowing if somebody's stalking you. So there's two different game modes currently, Battle Royale and Arena. And I have a feeling they could add any number of game modes to the game. It feels pretty adaptive that way. This keeps it fresh, allowing you to learn a character's team fight style in the arena if you just want to brawl the whole time, or learning the best paths to go in Battle Royale to get the best items. I feel like with any Battle Royale game, with any PvP game in general, honestly, there's going to be a meta here. Go here first, get this first, kill this camp first, drop here. That kind of thing, it's bound to happen in any game like this that has a core loop. But honestly, the idea here that they actually cycle where these items spawn every time, so it's not the same, I think that is a great call in adding a little bit of variety to their core loop. There's also environmental effects that are random for each time you drop in the game that can add a little bit of fun. Tornadoes, endless glider fuel, any number of things. I'm sure they can just iterate on that over and over again and add crazier things to the game. So characters are unlocked by leveling up your account and winning and playing games to get it. None of them are purchasable, which means that you must play the game in order to unlock them. A good handful are available to start though, giving you a really nice range of characters to try out. Currently, there are a, a ton of character abilities that go through the environment and some abilities that just feel unfair to fight against. However, <laughs> this is very early in the game's development and these things could change, get iterated on, reduce numbers, or find counters in the future. Although the game felt polished to a very high level, there were things that I still didn't quite understand, such as the fact you could crouch. I didn't know this game actually had sneaking in it and that sneaking and hiding was a big part of it, which is kind of unique. You could hide in the bushes here, similar to how you can in League of Legends, which is something I really didn't expect, but I found really fun because sneaking and hiding in the bushes actually increases your range of vision and makes you invisible to people who aren't right up on you, which means you can do fun sneak attack things. Come here, they come. Here they come, ready? Dude, go, 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 go. Oh my God, oh my God, wait. It actually fucking worked. However, the ability to sneak and crouch would be such an easy thing for them to throw on the quick command sheet in order to just get people understanding that yes, this is a mechanic. There was also this resource called mana that I didn't really understand. It's this tiny little blue bar under your health bar and it's basically used up every time you use abilities. So if you're not paying attention to it and you've used a ton of abilities, even if they're off cooldown, you might not be able to use them, which screwed me over in a few fights. Me not understanding that I needed to find mana potions and use them was actually a reason that killed me. This was kind of like a little feature that threw me out of the, the player fantasy a little bit here. The fact that I needed mana wasn't exactly communicated and the fact that I was low on mana was even less communicated. Sometimes this feels a little jarring since the idea of a fighting game and the idea of a resource that is limited but recharges after a certain amount of time feels a little strange in terms of the Super Smash Brothers analogy that they're trying to make here. The last thing that threw me was that you can't really like hold down the L and B button to continue attacking. You have to click it like you would be clicking in League of Legends. Another thing that's kind of interesting and a little jarring to get used to as someone who doesn't play a lot of MOBAs. All of this was honestly just a little bit of experience jank. I'm sure and pretty positive to be honest that they will take any of this feedback and other feedback from players and probably improve it next time we see the game. So the game really plays to your strengths if you are a MOBA player, because you're looking at various places on the screen that are pretty similar to what you'd be doing from a top-down MOBA, such as League. 
So if you have a lot of experience with League, learning Supervive probably won't be that hard for you. But for me, it was a bit hard to get used to because I'm used to third person or first person games and I wasn't used to looking on the screen in certain places. So I found myself constantly running into damage for no reason just because I was not used to looking in those areas. Supervive is one of those games that makes you feel as powerful as your character gets. Oh, guys, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm wrong. I'll give you win these. Vehicle gets those. Oh, Felgar, I hate to break it, do you? Your character is broken. Oh my god. Oh wrecked. my god. This it's still a battle royale, so sometimes you get unlucky, lose the first fight, and that's it. That's the same yeah. game. Good try. Good Person try. Revive. That was p bad. We oops. Oops. That. However, it's getting into the next one and trying again that kind of has that addictive feel to it. The game will require a lot of time in order to really master it, along with a battle pass that you will have to grind out to unlock rewards and heroes. Be prepared to spend hours in this game if you want to get good and use the heroes to their maximum potential. But I would say it's worth the investment. I kept saying, okay, I'm done after this game until it was hours later. That's fine. We can, this next one though, we got it. So that's a sign of a game worth playing in my eyes. I hope you like this video. Uh, by the way, channel members will also have uh, early access to uh, in development videos. So uh, check that out if you want, you know, just saying. Run, run. Whoa, oh, let's man. go! Oh my fucking god, GG! Let's go! Back from the dead.